everyone! Today I'm continuing my doll storage and organization series. Today I'm going to be talking specifically about how I store and organize my doll play sets, vehicles, houses, and horses. So all of those really big bulky items that I know I personally struggled with storing for years and years and years. I have a really big collection so obviously I have a ton of room dedicated to, to my dolls and their things and that also means that I have to d divide things up really specifically so if you have a smaller collection then obviously like the way I have to break things down probably wouldn't work for you and I'm also next level queen and organized I'm just really fanatical about how things are so this video is more just for ideas and to give you insight into how someone with a bigger collection stores their things. In my experience, I always struggled the most with how to properly care for my Barbie cars and play sets in particular. I had a big collection of these things growing up. I always did. I bought a lot of things at the store and a lot of things secondhand. And my sister and I had a lot of duplicated play sets that we each got for certain Christmases and things. So figuring out like a way that we could store these things without them getting broken or dirty was very very difficult. That was one of my main goals when I started reorganizing my doll stuff as an adult was to find a solution that wasn't crazy expensive, that was fairly sustainable, and that would protect my doll stuff because when you collect doll stuff you want to keep it nice obviously. For play sets themselves, so like you know little Barbie kitchens or you know brat salon, stuff like that, I find the best method is to break apart those items. If you have like a table and chair, see how they disconnect, take them apart, that's what I do. I always break things apart like to the smallest size that I can possibly get them. There are going to be bigger things that can't be broken down or things that are really fragile that once they're put together you don't want to take apart. But for most things I break them apart and what I do is I put them in bags. So this is kind of a system that's similar to what I do with doll clothes. Because it's plastic, it makes it harder to baggy things. So something really, really big or really pointy that's going to like jut out of the bag or poke holes isn't ideal. You want to keep everything really flat. Like you can see that I have this um, 80s kitchen packed really flat. And a lot of times if there's really tiny components to the play sets, I keep those in an even smaller bag on the inside. And these bags can be reused time and time again and like um, I have little labels on them so I know what goes to what. So the reason I do it this way, I have actually a very specific reason why I'm so intense about bagging things. It's so easy when you're storing a play set and you break things apart to forget what connectors go to which play set or for like fridge racks or faucets, little things like that to get lost. And sometimes it's inevitable that something does break just from being jostled around or being old. And if you have it bagged, then you know what goes to it when you want to set it up to play with or you want to set it up to use for a photo or whatever the case, it's all there. And those little pieces that break off or disconnect, they're all contained. And that's what I like about this because I would always forget like what a random connector went to because it's not like a visible piece in the set, it's like something on the inside. So this is really great and obviously everything is cleaned before I put it away. I clean all of my play sets and I do have a video on how I clean my play sets if you're interested. That way it's clean going in the bag and it's clean coming out so I don't ever have to worry about like cleaning things before I use them. And this works out really great. It keeps the things nice and together. As for the bags, I have learned a lot about like which bags do and don't work. So before I would try to fit everything in like gallon ziplocs. So these are one gallon bags, freezer bags. And um, this here is a little dining room table from the 80s and it holds it perfectly. But for like this big kitchen, no way would it ever fit in here. So I would have like a few of these for one place set and I just found that that ended up like being really confusing because there are multiple bags for the same play set and they would fall open because I have too much stuff crammed in them. So the ideal bag size for like most standard Barbie play sets that are kind of on the like larger side or have a lot of pieces are like the 2 gallon or the 2.5 gallons of blocks. I 
They're not sponsored, but I prefer the hefty ones because these are 2.5 gallons and the, the price difference, they were actually cheaper than I want to say the Glad bags at Walmart. The bags themselves were bigger and on top of that there were more bags in each box. So I had the box right here. So there were 11 of these bags and I want to say they were like about $4 for 11, which is kind of expensive sounding, but they fit a ton and they're really durable. I used up all of the Glad bags and from now on I'm just using this brand because like I said, it's better to have a little extra room. It's better to have wiggle room in there for the items because if you try cramming play sets into too small of a space, what's going to happen is they're going to break and obviously you don't want that. So I use that size most of the time but then for like smaller thinner things like this table, the gallons work out great and um, I used to write on the bag what it was like just straight up with Sharpie on the little like label here that you use for your freezer but I stopped doing that because I reuse these bags a lot um, because I tend to get like duplicated pieces so sometimes they need to size up into a different bag so I just use like the label like I do for clothing and then I can just put a new label over it we'll peel it off and it's just a lot easier and I can actually see this clearer than when it was on the bag. You're probably wondering, well, what do you do with something that's way, way, way too big for those bags? Well, that's gonna be inevitable. Like, I find that most refrigerators um, for Barbies and just like bigger pieces, like bed frames and things that don't break apart more, they're not gonna fit in one of those bags, and that's totally fine. I baggy things to keep them together, that like so that I don't confuse the pieces and to keep them clean. A really big item is going to be easy to pull out on its own. It's not going to be confusing. It's all in one piece, so why bag it? I'm not going to bag like one solitary chair, if that makes sense. So what I do is I have a really, really big container. I have to use enormous containers for my play sets. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. And at the bottom, I start with all of my like big bulky plastic things that won't go into the bags. So like refrigerators, bed frames, like whatever the case may be. And I lay them down in the container in a way that makes them kind of like a flat surface. And then I put all of my bags on top of those loose items. And the important thing is to make sure that the surface is level so that when you put the container on, there's no gaps. Like when you put the lid on, there's no gaps. Nothing's going to get in there. Because if you don't have lids for your containers, that's bad news. Because as a kid, I used to do that. I used to just like keep everything open. I had all these containers that didn't have lids and things would kind of stick out. And even though it was convenient in the sense that when something was awkwardly shaped and would protrude out of the container, I didn't have to worry about putting a lid on. Dryer lint got in there, bugs got in there, things got dirty. It just wasn't worth it. And that's also why I break things apart. Because um, even though it's inconvenient when you want to like use something and have to put it back together, it's easier because you can fit more in the container. So I used to keep things assembled all the time as a kid, but I found that they kind of fell apart on their own a lot of the times in storage, or they got broken, and they just took up way, way, way more space, like probably double or triple the space, depending on what it was. This is the bad boy that I use to store my Barbie play sets. This is a 45 gallon container. Please ignore the writing on the side. So they're really, really big, and obviously like, I need a container this size because I have such a sheer volume of doll stuff, but you could definitely go like smaller depending on your needs. Like um, my Mary Kate and Ashley furniture is in its own little container. This is how I have all of the big bulky items. So you can see like there's stoves and fridges and little cabinets, things that just don't fit into the bags well. And sometimes like in the case with this little dining room set, the table and chairs break up so small that they fit really nicely in the gallon Ziploc. You can't fit this in the gallon Ziploc, so I'd have to like have an enormous bag with barely anything, anything in it to put this in a bag. So that's sometimes why things like this that could fit in a big bag aren't. Then I just literally lay my little flat bags on top. And then for all of my random odds and ends, I'll just put them in a random parts bag, like little chairs and stools and things that I either haven't identified yet or they're just solo. 
So there you have it, and you can see I have plenty of growing room. I intentionally did this because I'm always getting kitchens and dining rooms. There you have it, and then the lid will fit on really nicely, and I prefer the latching lids just because I feel like it gives it more security. They're not gonna pop open. I wanna say I have about nine of those huge containers just for my like Barbie or like Barbie sized stuff. That's a lot of containers. And the way that I divide my play sets isn't by decade. Like most of the time I divide my Barbie stuff by decade, but that doesn't make sense for the play sets because I have a really like uneven number of play sets. Like, I have a ton of 2000s Barbie play sets and a ton of 90s play sets, but not as many 60s and 70s play sets, and there's no way I could fit all of my 2000s play sets in one container. It just doesn't make sense. And for what we use our furniture for, a decade isn't relevant. We use them for, like, you know, sets for photos or for videos, or like if we were to play with our dolls. We use it more by, like, type of thing, so, you know, kitchens bathrooms, stuff like that. So that's how they're organized by basically like the room that they're in. And for like my brass dolls, I keep their play sets separately because I do have enough for a, a container just for them. Moving on to storing vehicles and like really, really big houses. Now for the small like foldable houses, um, sometimes I can fit them into a big container. I can fit like multiple in there. And um, I have one container for like those houses, and the reason for that is I have the 60s dream house, the new dream house, and it's all cardboard, and I wanted to make sure that it would be 100% protected against moisture just in case like a pipe dripped or leaked or something. So I gave a big container to it, and then I had a little bit of room to fit other small compact Barbie houses around it. But normally that's not what I do just because it's kind of hard to put those houses in a container. So for things like cars and houses, I use the trash bag method. Now, this was where I really, really, really struggled. When I was a kid, again, I had a lot of vehicles. We had a lot of like campers and motorhomes specifically for our dolls. And we would just line them up on the bureau downstairs, like, you know, almost like they were parked in a garage with no protection and it didn't take long at all for them to get dusty and I always 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 would find like dead bugs in there like dead spiders, dead earwigs, it was gross and I spend way too much time cleaning my stuff and taking care of it to want to have to do that every time I use it and on top of that I just ended up getting too many play sets and too many vehicles to store on top of that one bureau so I had to do like a second layer and things would roll off it was just bad news so I finally came up with bagging the vehicles to keep them from getting dusty and to keep bugs out and the easiest thing to use that's compatible with the size is trash bags so it looks kind of like a body bag so this is my brat stage coach here um, and I just have a trash bag that I wrapped around it and I smacked on a little label so I knew what it was um, sometimes you can get like really clear trash bags or maybe you wouldn't need labels but because I needed certain ones that were really really big that were black that you couldn't see through at all I just decided to label everything um, and these white ones are pretty opaque so it's kind of hard to see so I just use masking tape and write my label on there and then I tie them in the back so I kind of like roll the vehicle into the bag and then tie it in the back now sometimes there's gonna be excess so like this bag fits pretty pretty perfectly but if I have excess or it's a bag that doesn't have like a tie so one of the ones that like you know they have like twist ties like this kind, the flap tie bags. I use forest wire to just tie around it um, to keep it closed. That's the main thing. You want to make sure that the back of the bag is closed so nothing climbs in through the gap. And when I go to use it, it's really easy because I just untie the little string that came with it or I just take off the forest wire. I take it out, use it for whatever, and then put it back tie it back and just make sure that my labels lined up where it was before. It's really not hard and trash bags are really cheap. You can get like super cheap ones and also if you got rid of your stuff and you had a bunch of empty trash bags and you just reuse them for your trash, I mean there's really no going on. There are a few different sizes that I've found work best for certain things. So. For like most of the average size, like Barbie and Bratz cars, the um, 13 gallon kitchen bags work the best. However, there are some like little like Volkswagen bugs or Jeeps that are like really, really tiny that 
this, this is even too big for like the vehicle swimming. So um, you can buy even smaller ones. I think they're meant for like bathroom trash bags or you can use grocery plastic bags like the kind you get at Walmart. Um, and then for like slightly bigger things, certain campers, motorhomes, RVs, like my flashback fever retro ride, I use the 30 gallon trash bag. So this is like your average size trash can that kind of like stands pretty tall. For really big things or really awkwardly shaped things, you're probably going to have to use like lawn bags, like yard bags for um, leaves because those are really, really big. And those are also at stores like Walmart. They're all like in the same area. And that's what I had to use for like my grand hotel and my three-story dream house because they were just so big. And again, I just put a label on those so I can see what it is. And it's better than trying to put these items in containers. The reason why I don't keep my vehicles in containers is because they're oddly shaped. They have like little mirrors that poke out or like some of the houses might have like a balcony. And to try to cram them in like a square container is just not gonna, a rectangular container is just not gonna work. It's gonna break things. And I have like way, way too many cars to fit in containers. And um, when I was trying it out, I realized that I can only fit like one one big camper in say like the container I showed you earlier, the 45 gallon, but there would be all this extra room but not enough for another vehicle. So it was a waste of space and containers are expensive. So I just bought a shelf um, at Home Depot, I have three actually. There are these like cheap little plastic shelves that come with like tubes and than like the actual shelf themselves. They're really easy to put together. They were about uh, $45 ish at Home Depot. And I mean, you can get nicer ones that are like metal and wood, but I uh, didn't want anything super heavy that would be difficult to put together. I just wanted something kind of chinzy because vehicles don't really weigh much. Um, they're not the best shelves. I don't like really recommend them, but they worked for my purposes and I just make sure to stack all of the heavy things on the bottom so like um brad stuff especially is really heavy like the flashback fever retro ride i have is really really heavy so i stack that at the bottom i'm going to take you guys downstairs so you can kind of get an overview of like how much space these play sets take up and what the little vehicle garage looks like so we are now in my basement which is where i store all of my doll stuff for the most part and the shelf behind me here is one of the more heavy duty ones. So it's like wooden metal. This was something my parents bought when they built the house. Um, so this is, this holds a lot of weight. So if you're gonna invest in like big shelving for your dolls, you probably wanna go and just get the really nice kind, but they cost like double what the plastic ones cost, which is why I just bought the plastic ones for the vehicles, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, currently this shelf is gonna get rearranged a little bit, but for now how I have things. This is an empty container. It's one of the big 45 gallon ones. Um, it's just an extra. We've reorganized things so many times and we used to keep other things in these containers. So that's just an extra one that I'm saving for you know, playset overflow at some point. So I have my Bratz and Moxie Girls playsets here. These are miscellaneous playsets, so doctor's offices, gyms, just random things that don't really have a category. Um, and then we have my Strawberry Shortcake playsets, my Mary Kate and Ashley Monster High and Disney playsets, restaurants and grocery stores, salons, spas, vanities, boutiques, and wardrobes, so fashion related stuff. This is Kelly Furniture. Um, not all of it. There's so much like Kelly furniture that's like a single piece like the bath time fun bathtubs and the pool fun Kelly pools and things like that that I have a container just for those things that I don't want to bag but they're kind of small. And then we have outdoor recreation, camping, beaches, bikes, sports, etc. Pools, patios, and gardens, Kelly and baby play sets. So this is like the bigger stuff that is large that can't be baggied or like a big bag of furniture. Barbie houses, so this is where my dream house is. Then down here we have the living rooms, bathrooms, and bedrooms. This is the container you saw earlier. The kitchens and dining rooms. And then I do have some things that are like case style play sets. So this is the folding pretty house. This is my fancy house. Um, they're not bagged because they're fine, like they're they're like cases, they don't need to be bagged and they don't really get dirty anyways. And I just have them kind of crammed in these little like extra gaps here just to save room. And then um, I do keep, once in a while, 
I do keep the boxes that my play sets come in. That is something that I like to do just for things that are like maybe heavily cardboard like this Rockers play set. Or um, my Magic Snow Cabin, which is like really awkwardly shaped. It just makes more sense to keep them in the box because the box protects them. And it takes up less space because I can just slide them in this narrow spot. And then um, this metal thing over here, this actually holds Becky's wheelchairs because Becky's wheelchairs always used to get broken when we were kids. So we wanted to keep them in like a nice metal, basically a tote thing all by themselves to keep them protected. Over here, this is like my doll garage or like um, the place where I keep some of the small houses. So up here I have my country living home and then this gazebo thing that's actually a centerpiece. Then these are some of like my houses and stables. Then these are my little brats play sets. Again, this is my um, big box. I actually keep all of my little brats furniture in here because it all fits. And then this is their, uh, their house. And then I have my two strawberry shortcake houses. Then I have some like tour buses. And then I have down here, these are motor homes and that's a cruise ship. Then those are more motor homes. Then these are my airplanes. So it's kind of organized based on what they are. These are like the beach bus and the country camper. Then these are like my two carriages, just like your basic SUVs and kind of things, Beatles. And then I have just an empty shelf for when I need things. And then I keep all my tiny horses in this container here. I'll show you where I keep the other ones in a minute. This is where I keep all my tiny horses um, just because I have like a million of them so I can't can't store them the way I store my big ones. Those are where I keep all of my backdrops that I make for videos and uh, photos. I just fold them up and keep them up there. For my American Girl furniture, I do have some American Girl furniture and I could baggy it if I wanted, but I have this old toy chest that I had as a kid and I just keep things in here. Really big 79 dream house. We just keep on the old coffee table down here because it's like enormous and why bag it? It makes a nice display piece. It doesn't really get that dusty. I just make sure I dust it here and there and you know vacuum out anything spot clean occasionally. That's all it needs. Fortunately those shelves that I showed you, the white ones, they are really short so certain things that are just too tall for them. So I just keep those two tall items on top of this hutch thing that has some Barbie stuff inside. So like my high school, my talking townhouse, my monster high high school, and then this um, real friends dollhouse. And then in the closet in my parents' old room, <laughs> this looks like body bags for sure, but these are my three really, really big play sets. So this is my grand hotel. This is one of the yard bags, by the way. And um, I don't tie these on the bottom. I just slide them over like so because they're just so big. And then I have my high school musical high school and in the back there, that's the three story dream house. And then this is the third story that um, got its own bag because it disconnects. So it has its own bag. And I just keep these in here. And then you're not gonna be able to see much, but in the closet, there's also um, like some of the big American girl things. They're in the closet because they don't get dusty in here, so. And then my horses. I didn't mention how I stored them earlier because it's really simple. I just line them up on this bookshelf and um, the reason I don't put them in containers anymore is because their hair would just get totally mangled when I tried putting them in containers. And some of them are really old, like Ginger over here. Um, I played with him so much that his leg broke off a million times so he has like a metal pin holding it in place. So I just really wanted to avoid any sort of like contact and bumping that could mess these horses up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that maybe it gave you some ideas for storing your play sets in vehicles for your dolls. Again, the way I organize might be a little too intense or involved for a lot of other people, but I think that it's just really important to make sure that however you're storing your play sets and your vehicles, that you're not cramming them into too small of a space where things are gonna get broken that you're not putting too much weight on the items, so like stacking up cars too high, and to keep the things clean because play sets and vehicles attract a lot of bugs. You do have a problem with like bugs or rodents wherever you live. They don't like the smell of dryer sheets, so I just stick those in like the problem areas. I don't usually have a problem in my basement, it's only in the closets, and I think it's because um, of like the ductwork or something in there. 
but I haven't had an issue since I bagged them. So there will probably be one more installment sometime in the near future uh, of this series where I give you guys an overview of like all the doll storage downstairs and how it all looks together and show some of the things that like are random that weren't featured in another video before. But of course, if I change things up or there's something else that I decide needs to be stored or organized especially, I'll definitely make another video. And until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.